So they're bringing so, them in so they get the inner workings of prison, so they can enter into the prison industrial complex? On some level. On some level, but not become. We know they're never going to be incarcerated. Because in it's cases. a viable business. It's not going away. It's never going away. And you have, if you decide to go down that road, you have a guaranteed source of income. I mean, we, the product that we made in New York State Prison is, go by the, um, it's called Core Craft. This is on the stock market, Core Craft. You know, the Core Craft is making upholstery in one prison. In Greenhaven, they make couches, tables like this. How, got, how much do you guys get paid? Well, they might make 16 cents an hour. 10 cents an hour, literally. And they have to do it. Oh, yeah. You don't go to program. You, um, you go into the box. In 2000, guys refused to go to uh, the core craft because they didn't want to uh, build cells. They had a group of guys that found out that there was steel coming off of the van. They unloaded a truck. A group of prisoners were forced to unload a truck. And they realized what they were unloading were bars bars and doors and they said hold on man they, they opening up a shop uh, where we have to build cells so a few days later these guys says we're not doing that we're not building cells for our kids oh these guys went to the box and they shipped them from a close a prison that's close to their family green haven they shipped them to clinton and the so box for the, the listener the box is solitary confinement so SHU, if you solitary do house. labor for 16 cents an hour you get confined to solitary confinement. Yeah, you get a misbehavior report. You, you, nine times out of ten, when you go for that misbehavior report, you're found guilty and you're penalized for not be engaging in slave wages, slave labor. That is a fact. This has gone... Every prison, uh, when COVID started, a lot of people don't know where the hand sanitizer was coming from. It was coming from Great Meadows, right? It was coming from Great Meadows, and at one point... You know, Governor Cuomo, was, he had it on the news. We got a hand sanitizer the guys are making, and this, is, this was for sale at one point. I and mean, so any, that's another form of extraordinary profit. Oh, of course. Even yeah. more profitable than making iPhones, iPhones. in China, <laughs> which is wild, because it's already is, evil. Yeah. I mean, yeah. from everything, from you, you go from... Okay, New York made 11 million bottles of hand sanitizer. Now it has 700,000 gallons it can't get rid of. Wow. They said, they, a <laughs> spokesperson said he makes no apologies for single-handedly solving a hand sanitizer shortage. Oh, really, spokesperson? Hey, how'd you do that? Maybe you should make an apology for how the fuck you did that. I absolutely love this show that you can pull this stuff up in yeah. real time. Yeah. In real time, you can see guys like former Queens prosecutor John Scarpa. You yeah. can, in real time. In real time. Right? In real time, you yeah. can Google former prosecutor. Uh, yeah, let's Google him right former now. Former Queens prosecutor John Scarpa. Yeah. And you can see what his conviction was. And this is... um. This is a guy that has a history of doing this for Just the fact decades. That this core craft, that's what it's called? Yeah. The fact that this is a profitable entity that you could s trade on the stock market, and the, the, the very people that are working there are essentially slaves. When, when Not even essentially. <clears throat> when Stephen King, They're slaves. When Stephen King wrote Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, mm -hmm. which became the movie Shawshank Redemption, and there was a, you know, the part of the movie where they talked about the the work program and how some genius figured out that there was cheap labor to be had in prisons he didn't base that off of some fictional whim you know when he was up at night chomp, chopping away on that typewriter um that was based and this has been going on for decades and decades yeah. and and you know i think that um it's it should shock people and it should as uh, it should be a rallying cry um, you know, if you've never been <clears throat> in a prison before, um, and you know, it's just sort of occupies a space in your mind as it's just a bad place that I don't want to be in ever. And I wouldn't want my family member to be in. That's okay. You could live your life that way. Um, but you can also take notice of the fact that, you know, somewhere between four and 7%, some estimates of the people in there are innocent. And some of the other people that are in there just made a mistake. And you don't throw away a life because they made a mistake. Um, and, to, and to see some of these sentences, um, you know, 50 years, 70 years, 
and it's not just in California where there was a three strikes rule, um, to see sentences getting doled out that are de facto life sentences to children. To children. Um, Michael Dawson, Sheldon Johnson was, uh, I think, 17 um, or had just turned 18. And the guy gets sentenced to 70 years on a first offense. Look, this is a beautiful moment. I don't know if Jamie has a picture. I sent it to him. But like two weeks after Bruce got out. We got word that Sheldon was going to get out and get resentenced. So Bruce said, I want to be there when he walks out. And, you know, he got all of this. <laughs> so that is them FaceTiming me as Sheldon walked out of the gate. And J.J. Velasquez is, is the other gentleman on the other side of Sheldon. J.J. Velasquez is... You know, it took one guy who believed in J.J., this this investigative reporter called, named Dan Slepian, who um, believed in J.J., amongst many other people that believed in J.J. J.J. now goes into Sing Sing regularly and runs a program there mm -hmm. called the Frederick Douglass um, Project. And he does it with um, the professor from Georgetown, Mark Howard. Mark Howard. And he goes in there and he brings people in from the community to, sh to try to show them the humanity that is behind prison walls. There, there was over a hundred years of, of over-incarceration and wrongful incarceration in that, a century in that picture. Um, it'd, be nice, it'd be nice to invite Joe to go in one day. Go in with uh, JJ. We tell JJ, man, we, offered, we, we extended the offer to... Joe Rogan and his team to come into Sing Sing one day with the Frederick Douglass Project. Come in and meet some guys and see, and see what it's like. We should do that.